Hi guys, uh, Patek here. Uh, today's video will be about my January wrap up. Uh, in January, I finished 8 books and 1 short story. I'm also trying a new angle here because I want to use a better camera and let me know whether this one is better or the previous videos are better. The first two books that I finished in January are The Last Kingdom and also The Pale Horseman. Both of them are by Bernard Conwell. These are the first two books in the Last Kingdom series. I love the way Bernard Conwell writes. It's been a while since I've read his books. The last time was the Warlord Chronicles trilogy, which is the Arthurian series. I truly love Conwell's prose. He writes amazing battle scenes and his characterizations are really good. This is something that's quite missing in the uh, first season of the TV show. So in the TV show of The Last Kingdom, uh, the first season adapted the first two books, right? I didn't expect that they would actually skip uh, Uhtred's coming of age story. I didn't even know there would be a coming of age story for Uhtred in the first book. And I think uh, this is very integral to Uhtred's characterization and his personality. I cannot believe they skipped it. Also, for whatever reason, uh, the TV show just decided to throw away Uhtred's helm. Uhtred, in the first two books at least, always wear his helmet when he goes to battle. In the TV show, no, no protection whatsoever. No idea why. So I enjoyed the first book. And the same thing can also be said for the second book. For both books, I gave both of them 4 stars rating. I really enjoyed them. And definitely better than the first season. Another important thing that Cornwell definitely did better than the TV show is that I can feel the sense of urgency and the sense of danger that the characters felt. This was really displayed in the second book. In the King of Swamp Sin, if you have read this book or have watched the TV show, you will know what I'm talking about. In the TV show, it was okay, I guess, but I didn't really get that they were really in danger from the TV show, but in here, I can really feel it. I can really feel that this was the breaking point. And the battle scenes, well, nothing else needed to be said. It's Bernard Conwell. It's always good. But I do have an issue with Bernard Conwell's style of storytelling, is that his books, somehow, all of them, this was also evident in the World Chronicles trilogy, always have super long paragraphs. I, I'm talking about one, uh, one paragraph can, I'm talking about one paragraph ranging to two pages long, and I mean, why? This makes the book felt longer than it should be, and the pacing felt slower because of it. These are minor issues in the grander scheme of things, but yeah, I wish his paragraphs weren't that long. Then the next book I finished is a debut. This is The Counselor by E.J. Beaton. I love this one. I didn't expect I would really love it, but it was really good. This is a Machiavellian fantasy with a very high focus on politics, and the prose was absolutely wonderful. Beaton's prose somehow reminded me of reading Robin Hobb's prose. That's not a praise that I say it lightly. It was beautiful, it was poetic, and Lisa de Prior, the main character, is morally grey. I didn't expect that, and I really enjoyed the book because of that too. Because despite the morally grey nature of her character, there's something about her determination and her iron will to do everything she can in her own way to live up to the reputation left by Queen Sutherland Bray. And I think it was so well written that I cannot help but root for her. Do not come into this book expecting a lot of action scenes. As I said, the counselor is very highly focused on politics and manipulation and scheming, but there were two action scenes and both of them were incredible. As for my issue with this book, it's a bit similar to The Last Kingdom, but it's not the length of the paragraphs, it is the length of the chapter. Almost all of them were very long. I mean, think about it, this book is almost 500 pages long, and it's told in 15 chapters, so you can probably imagine that the slower paced nature of the narrative, which is not a fault on its own, plus the length of the chapter make things slower than it should have. Other than that, I love this one. The, I think this is a great debut. And I think The Counselor is a duology. I don't know the name of the series. I'm just gonna call it The Counselor for now. And I cannot wait to see how Beaton will conclude the series in the next book. The next book that I finished in January was Gardens of the Moon by Steven Erickson. This is a reread, and I have done a full spoiler free review on this channel. I'm going to leave the link in the description. But suffice to say that I really, really enjoyed the second read through of this book. I didn't realize how many stuff I missed on my first read. Erickson has implemented so many foreshadowing and revelations in this book, but we cannot see them on our first read. And if you don't notice them on your first read, don't worry, you're not stupid. It is meant to be that way. All the revelations and the foreshadowing are invisible on your first read. They are John Cena. You cannot see them. You cannot see them. There is nothing wrong with that. That's just how it is. I love the second read through Gardens of the Moon. I cannot wait to see how I feel about Death House Gates, which I'm going to start very soon. Then the next book that I finish is The Two-Faced Queen. Uh, this is the second book in the Legacy of the Mercenary Kings by Nick Martell. Uh, it's a bit of a shame for this book because I really want to love this more. In the first book, The Kingdom of Liars, my issue with it was that the main character was so infuriating for the first half. 
He was meant to be unlikable, and wow, the author really made him so unlikable in the first half of the first book. But in the second half of The Kingdom of Liars, the pacing was so engaging, the story was unputdownable, and the situation applies to this book again. But this time it's not because the main character was unlikable, I mean, he was still unlikable, but he was so much less infuriating than the first book because of the events of the first book. But somehow I did feel that the Two-Faced Queen doesn't have to be 600 pages long, the first half felt so aimless, and it was a struggle for me to read through the first half of this book. And the second half was once again amazing, and the author did a great job in setting up things for the third book, which I hope would be the conclusion of this series, because I personally don't think that this series can be extended beyond three books. Then the next two books that I finished in January, oh by the way, uh, all of these are done in chronological fashion, I'm just mentioning to you the books, and these are The Combat Codes and Griever's Blood the first two books in the Combat Code Saga, which is a trilogy, and it will end this year. I'm so looking forward to the third book. This is an MMA-inspired sci-fi series, and I really enjoyed this one. The first book was quite straightforward. It revolves around Sego, a boy with a mysterious past, which he cannot remember, that's trying his best to live up to the Combat Codes. This book has great action scenes, and I really love the characterizations for Sego and Murei, the two main characters of the first book. And I had a really great time with the first book. Some reviewers have mentioned that this is Red Rising mixed with the Matrix, uh, with mixed martial arts. I think that's a great description of the first book. The second book though, this is where the author deserves some praises in my opinion, because the author, uh, Alexander Darwin, really took a bit of a gamble. He took a risk with this, and it won't click with some readers, especially if they expect that the narrative will be as straightforward as the first book. Darwin really expanded the scope in the second book. And Sego, the main focus of the first book, has to share his spotlight with two new POV characters here, equally. And this is very risky. The best comparison I can think of for this one, in from my experience, is Blood Song by Anthony Ryan. The first book revolved only around Valin Alsorna, and it was amazing. One of the best books that I ever read. Love, love Blood Song. But the sequel was so disappointing. Valin is pretty much on the bench, and when he appears, he doesn't sound like Valin anymore somehow. But that problem doesn't apply only to Tower Lord. It then goes even worse in Queen of Fire, the conclusion to Raven Shadow trilogy. Queen of Fire was so bad, one of the worst conclusions to a trilogy I've ever read. Maybe even the worst. It was really disappointing. It's simply unbelievable that this was the third book in the same series as Blood Song. But enough about that. So does Alexander Darwin repeat this mistake? I was worried at first. I was seriously worried that he would repeat the same mistake that Anthony Ryan did. But no, at the end of Griever's Blood, I have to really say that, that Alexander Darwin has successfully raised the scope and danger of the series in a way that makes the series even better for it. I'm so looking forward to see how Darwin will conclude this series. By the way, uh, there will be a new cover art for the second book, and I will be doing a cover reveal on this channel. Please look forward to it. And the last novel that I finished in January was The Forever Sea by Joshua Philip Johnson. This is again a debut, an environmental epic fantasy, and I have to say that I'm a bit disappointed with this one. I'm sorry. The pacing was very sluggish, and it doesn't help that the main character was quite annoying. Kindred is the kind of main character that constantly act without thinking, and she constantly put a lot of people in danger because of her actions, repeatedly, and it gets boring after a while. But I have to say though that the prose was indeed really good, and the world building, as you can probably expect from the cover art, was stunning. It felt like I was reading a Hayao Miyazaki's world or something. It's magnificent and there's so much more to the world building. It's unfortunate that the characterization and the pacing didn't really work for me. But I think if you prioritize world building in your fantasy read, this one will work for you. And the last one that I finished is a short story. This is The Drowning Fate by R.F. Kuang. This is only 15 pages long, and I cannot say a lot on this. It is told entirely from Neja's perspective. It really gives depth to his character and made the events in the Poppy War trilogy even more heartbreaking now. <laughs> so good, if you're a fan of the Poppy War, please give this short story a read. It's free and it's on the author's website. And that's it. That's all the books that I finished in January. My book of the month will have to go to The Counselor by E.J. Beaton. I think this is an impressive debut. I rated almost every book mentioned in this video with a 3 or 4 stars rating, so they're good or great. But I didn't get any 5 stars read yet uh, in January. So yeah, hopefully this month will be a better reading month than January. And that's it for today. As always, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate that you took some time to watch my content. I hope you will have a great day and happy reading to you. Bye-bye.